All right, what's up, everybody? In this video, I'm going to explain the uh, temperature system a little bit here in oxygen not included for all those folks out there that are confused when they see DTUs and specific heat capacity and thermal conductivity and all that good stuff. Fear not, I have been there and this video will help a little bit, hopefully. So DTU and Celsius, right? So in this game, um, heat energy is measured in DTU. So basically you can click on here as an example, you'll see it written, right? DTU. Um, and the temperature you see on the tiles and buildings is the Celsius, obviously. So basically the DTU is the math and the Celsius is the actual temperature. Now, when you see something that says like KDTUS, that's just the thousands, right? So um, this one is 1000 DTUS and this one is 9000, basically it's nine KDTU a second. And the second, this is just saying that this is how much it sends out per second. So back to this easier example, this is sending out 1000 uh, duplicate thermal units per second versus the uh, 9,000. The next thing that we need to know is specific heat capacity. And this is an important one. So specific heat capacity is how many DTUs it takes to raise one gram of a material by one degree. So a high specific heat capacity uh, means the material resists temperature change. And then a low specific heat capacity means it will change temperatures easily. So when you have a material that doesn't hold um, a lot of uh, heat, then it's going to go up by one degree very quickly. Whereas if you have a material that holds a lot of heat, it is like very slow to raise temperature, right? So it's kind of like if you think of like a, a, a cup with water in it, and every time the cup overflows, it goes up one degree. Now, basically a small heat capacity is the equivalent of having a small cup. So it just fills constantly and keeps going up by one degree. Whereas a large heat capacity, you know, is basically the opposite. It's like saying you have a big cup and it fills slowly before it goes up by one degree. Thermal conductivity is another big one that you see with the heat capacity and thermal conductivity determines how quickly heat moves between the material and whatever it touches. So obviously a high conductivity moves heat faster, lower conductivity, slower is heat transfer. Um, now, if you read the tooltip here, it says, you know, the object can conduct heat to another material at a rate of thermal conductivity of uh, 120 um, for each degree celsius difference right and then between two objects the rate of heat transfer will be determined by the object with the lowest conductivity which makes sense right so if you have something with high conductivity and if you put it beside something with a, a, a really low conductivity um the low one trumps the number so it is the low one will be the one that decides you know how fast it actually moves obviously so there we go on that one but so we, and another way to think about it is if you have a um, things with low conductivity or sorry, high conductivity um, are jumping around all the time in temperature wise, whereas something with low conductivity um, doesn't, you know, jump around in temperature constantly. So uh, next thing let's look at is overheating temperature. OK, so this is a big one that plays into um, the temperature mechanics in this game. And you've probably seen this all over the place, overheating temperature. So it's under the status effect. And here's a perfect example on this coal generator. We've got a 75 um, degree. And basically this is the temperature at which the, the building's gonna start to take damage if it, uh, if it gets to that temperature and then it will break, right? Um, some things don't have overheating temperatures. So if you don't see an overheating temperature listed on it, it means it doesn't have an overheating temperature. But don't confuse that with melting right everything has a melting point and that's completely different that's you know saying when it's actually going to physically melt um, melting points are generally way higher and they're found in the properties overheating will be in the status now obviously the overheating temperature can be affected by what materials you're using so for example this coal generator here says 125 this one's 75 and that's because i made 
the coal generator here out of gold, right? Um, so if you look at it and then we look at the gold amalgam, of course, it says plus 50 degrees Celsius. And so that's where we're getting um, that extra overheating temperature from. So what you make things out of, you know, uh, the properties of that material affects, you know, what you're what you're making. And then a lot of this stuff will have other little stuff like thermally reactive or slow heating, overheating temperature, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll say right in a little tool tip. So here, thermal reactive specific heat capacity is 0.2 DTU to raise one gram by 1K. Now, 1K is basically, you know, just one degree Celsius. Um, so you can read those to see how that all works. Now, heat capacity and mass. This is a big one. Um, so a material's total heat capacity comes from the specific heat multiplied by its mass right so more mass as you can see here um means more heat required to change the temperature low mass uh things will swing in temperature quickly high mass things change slowly right so when we look at water for example and i say okay specific heat capacity of 4.179 um that basically means that we need 4.179 dtus per gram to raise it by one degree celsius but then you have to look at the fact that we have a thousand kilograms of water to begin with. So this applies to every gram. So you have to basically heat a thousand kilograms, max them out to 4.17 DTU in each one. And then when you go over it, and that would raise this entire packet by one degree. And now, you know, that is big regarding what material you're using because different materials have different mass allowances. Some materials um, hold more mass than others um, in the same amount of space. So, you know, you got to take those things into consideration. And then it also is affected by the, um, the phase states, right? So because everything has a state in which it can change to different materials, right? So here we're looking at the brine. You go to 102.8 and you're going to get steam and uh, 300 grams of salt. Now, keeping in mind that the temperature here um, is usually, I think it's like plus three or minus three. So it's not exactly 102.8. There's a lot of like hidden mechanics that don't really make sense in the game. Um, but uh, so it won't happen exactly at the specific temperature all the time. Usually it's plus three or minus three and vice versa. But they all have different things they can uh you know they can condense or they can evaporate and um, some of them will do different things too so like polluted water right so if you uh if you heat this um you can get dirt you can get dirt if you didn't know that so uh you know a lot of different things and then you know the dirt will turn into something and then you can heat the dirt and then you can turn it into sand right so maybe you need sand for something and you got a lot of polluted water and you you know you can turn your polluted water, heat it up, get dirt, and then heat the dirt and get sand. Circle of life. Um, so, and then, so here is a perfect example. We look at um, super coolant, right? And we were talking about heat capacity and conductivity. So check this out. 8.44 specific heat capacity and 9.4 conductivity. So it has a, a high conductivity and a high capacity. So it holds a lot of heat and it's willing to transfer the heat, which is what makes it so good. When you compare that to water right here, thermal conductivity of 0 0.6, right? Huge, absolutely huge. Now, heat transfers generally through, um, through conduction. So it moves between a building and its tile and between neighboring tiles and between, you know, gases, liquids, etc. Um, the amount transferred depends on the temperature difference uh, conductivity and heat capacity and then of course a vacuum blocks all heat transfer so when you're dealing with um, a space and if you get rid of the um, everything inside and you make it a vacuum then the, the temperature won't transfer through now obviously you can you know create a box and you can put a, uh, a vent in it or sorry a pump and you can suck all the air out of it um, or you can, you know, fill them and then just delete it. And that's another way to do the vacuum. Um, 
also worth noting that anytime you operate in a vacuum of course uh if you have something that generates heat even if it's a small amount it will slowly overheat the building because the building can't get rid of the heat that it's using right so you could have a i don't know a battery or whatever you want to think of and this may never become a heating issue for you whatever building it is research station whatever and but then if you put it in a vacuum it's no longer able to get rid of um its temperature that it's creating so that slow amount of heat that it may be creating eventually will make it so hot that it starts to break because it's not able to get rid of it around it so vacuum is very helpful but you got to watch and uh, and be careful temperature shift plates um these things always confuse me but they basically spread heat across the tiles they touch by absorbing the heat from the hotter cells and they uh, pass it into the colder ones the materials obviously determine how much heat they store and how fast they move it so often you'll see uh, temperature shift plates made out of diamond um or something that you know has uh, decent conductivity um another thing here why I have water everywhere is because you can basically use temperature shift plates. If you've never seen this little trick, right? You can use them to, uh, to make ice. And if you have something that's overheating, you can tell them to build a temperature shift, temperature shift place somewhere where it's really hot. And then it will, um, it will melt and then it will make it all nice and cool in that area for a little while. And putting water, you know, in sections where you want to, um, spread heat around, is uh or just as uh, something to absorb heat works really good so that's why you'll see sometimes people will have uh a little bit of water on the ground you just got to make sure that you don't have too much that it doesn't um you know flood the building and prevent it from working uh heat transfers strongly when two cells share like one side right share a side um or if it's they share with liquid or gas or whatever um, but diagonal, right, isn't really a thing. They don't count. So that's why you'll see when uh, people are messing around in the uh, with the magma biomes and stuff like that, we'll dig special, um, like kind of sideways to do work and whatever to to not break in and to try to uh, reduce any heat issues. But that's basically the gist of it, and that's all you really need to know for how to deal with it. And it just, and it just comes, uh, you know, becomes a matter of learning the different materials and um what works best for specific things right so you'll learn like there's little nuances right like a um a bisolite uh thermal conductivity of um 0, 0.000 right so you get to a point where all of a sudden you've got you know some abysolite that's like crazy hot it's over a thousand degrees but and it, you've got piles of it but you can't do anything with it um because you can't get rid of the heat in it right so you've got like these like little hot rocks that are just stay hot um so there's all these little different things and then you know you'll see with the insulated tiles right they don't want to transfer heat well they have low conductivity and they have a decently high um capacity i mean it's not really high but um it's higher than you know other things like you know the metal tile for instance so this is part of what makes them such good insulators. So if you think if it's got a high heat or a high uh, specific heat capacity and low conductivity, the great heat sinks, great insulators. Um, and then the reverse is true for something that will transfer material well, or sorry, transfer the heat faster. Um, gases, again, with the phase uh, changes and stuff, you have to be cautious because they'll all do uh, change when they get to a specific temperature. So here, right, this uh, polluted oxygen temperatures can turn into liquid oxygen and vice versa. So keeping in mind that everything can change depending on what temperature is around it. Anyways, I hope that kind of helps um, clarify what all these numbers, we've covered thermal, we've covered heat capacity, we've covered DTUs. Uh, we know what KDTUs are compared to normal DTUs. We know how that interacts with um, mass and we know how they all have phase changes where they can change into different materials. 
Um, if you have any other questions, don't forget, hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best I can to answer. Again, if I made a mistake, please let me know. I'm not perfect and this game has got so much going on. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Don't forget, like and subscribe.